This is In Boot Camp, Episode 8, Group Project 1, on Saturday, March 9th, 2019, with your host Matthew Petchel and Ryan Rampersad. You can find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash IB8. Hey Ryan, do you know what time it is? It's time for IB number 8. It sure is. And uh, it's been a fun week this week. Uh, not so much um, in class, but uh, there have been developments outside of class that we'll outside get to of later class. on in show. Wow, that is a lead, if I've ever heard, and that's been next. buried so that you have to listen to the whole thing. whole show, because uh, the first little bit is just me ranting about uh, boot camps and stuff, and then the real cool fun stuff is at the end. Good. So let's let's uh, begin with what you've learned lately. Yeah, um, so uh, Firebase, man. Firebase. Firebase. Yeah. It's, wow, that's um, a big turn. So you... Let's recap briefly. So you've did, done APIs and Ajax last week, mm-hmm. and now we uh, and we did last week. We did local storage and cookies and some other stuff. Okay, um, that's good. But that's um, if you want to make something for yourself. Now we are storing data in a database, and it's kind of an interesting thing Web because database. database. Yeah, it's, it's not a it's not a true like it's not like a MySQL or a Postgres. No, the best database there is, of course. It's um, I don't even know what kind of a data it's. Is it relational? Like, what is Firebase? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's whatever you want it to be. Yes, um, it is. And Firebase sort of has this unique position right now in being one of uh, the best SaaS offerings for sort of getting some back-end tech exposed to you in some way for front-end purposes. So this is really cool in a boot camp scenario because how do you... Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I you, literally everyone in the world has a Gmail account. Right. And everyone uses it. Um... No, oh, some of my group members still hot mail. Ah, and yeah. um, but either way, so the instructor could just say, "Okay, everyone, go to Firebase," and like, "Oh yeah, you're already signed into your browser because everyone who has a Chrome this logs into the browser, so yep. all their passwords and stuff are right there." And then, um, yeah, you you already have a database. Well, what you I don't think, have to do anything. What I also think is interesting, beside all of the account management, is it is a low bar to entry for this kind of There's advanced no functionality. Because storing data is something that's really useful in an application, turns out. Um, and you don't need to have a server. You don't need to know Java, Java for script for Node. You don't need to know Java for Spring. You don't need to know how MySQL works. You don't need to know how to even do SQL. You just put, you just keep pushing objects into a data store, and they're good. Yep. And we talked about different ways of doing that. So you can, um, like... You could set something to the Firebase, and so like um, if you wanted a value that was always changing, you could do that. Or you can push something in there, and so you would have a like you know if you're adding users and stuff, you just keep on pushing. Like let's say um, a contact information something, boom, and um, oh, it's just we've been playing around with it a lot, and now we have our first group project that is going to have to use Firebase in some way or form, but we get to pick how it's done. Great. So um. Tell me about like how you experimented with Firebase. Like, how did you learn how to use it? Oh, uh, do you really want to know? Yeah. Uh, so, trolling the professor. So, when you put your um, thing up there, I mean, you authenticate by this um, little API key. API object. Okay. They they um, it's more than just a key. It's yeah. more than just that. It's like a dozen um, keys. Yeah, all kind of in one little object. Object yeah. and. Uh, basically, we haven't done any authentication something. So if you have access to the database, you know, delete everything, do whatever you want, um, set empty. It's, yeah, it's it's fun. Or you can just click something in there. So um, one of my group members was in Florida this week for our little team project. Um, well, almost everything we do is team based at the boot camp, like because yeah. you know, you help your teammates and then you all succeed in the end. Right. Um, and. It was in Florida, and he just literally, instead of like just changing the values, we made a click counter because that was the first little thing we did was just you know click, 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 click. Yep. And um, he sat there and clicked it like five hundred sometimes while the explanation was going up. And then you can mess with the instructor's thing because he left his key up, and it's not, it's yeah, you know, it was a lot of fun. Um, and it just started making it you know every every week now everything is more real world. I feel. Yeah, so as you get more tools, you're able to express the your desire to make something better. Yeah, and yep. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned your first group project. So tell me how many group members do you have? I have three others. It's a team of four. Okay, team of four. 
And so how long do you have for your group project? We have two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Um, and that starts now? Like... That started Thursday. Okay, it's Thursday. So two weeks after one Thursday night class. Yep. And um, we're off to a, kind of a weird start. Uh, one other group member showed up for class today. One of them did remote, and we were able to hang out call because um, we were going to Slack call because I made it a new workspace. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, uh, group calling. That'll be a great feature for $6.67. At, uh, yeah, can't do that. No, I mean, you can if you shell out some money. Yeah, but it's $6.67 per, per person. Per user, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yep. it's, it's kind of greedy a little bit. But no, one of the, so we, today was when we actually decided what our app was going to be. So tell me about your like um, process for coming up with those initial ideas. Oh, um, so um, I made, I was brainstorming things. I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a little chess thing because we want, some guy wanted to do a game. I'm like, well... I like chess. Chess is fun. And like, well, chess is kind of hard because um, pieces move kind of funny. Yes. I'm like, well, what's something easy? Well, tic-tac-toe is easy. Um, yep. Once a piece is on the board, it doesn't move. Yeah. It, 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 the it, rules it, are much simpler. Yeah. And like, what, what's a game that's a little harder than tic-tac-toe? But Connect four. I did not think of Connect four, but I was thinking Othello. Okay. Um, that's good, too. Well, because after something's on the board, it can change. It can yes. switch. Um, so position doesn't change, but like, you know, dark light. Um, right, right, right. So I thought that would be cool because you'd add them and then all you have to do was make them flip if like at the end of that. So I thought that would be a cool little game to do. And um, yeah, and just we decided that we like hockey and sports. So yeah, screw that. Um, I was like, well, I got four good ideas. We could do a little calendar app thing. That would be a piece of cake. We could whip it up in a day or we could do a tic-tac-toe thing which would probably take a while longer um and you could play with somebody else so whoever was on there would just take turns like right. your x your o and literally if you were being mean you could just you know make the move for the other person well you gotta um, make that not happen i don't know how to do that quite yet yeah you'll find out yeah uh, and then i got two weeks to learn yeah i can do anything in two weeks exactly javascript was made in two weeks like just <laughs> you ten, can do anything even less 10 days Whew. wow uh, crazy 10 days yep but, um, no, it's just, I, I thought that was a great tiered system. Like, uh, depending on how ambitious we were, we could do tic-tac-toe, Othello, right. chess. So just keep adding complexity, has, have a list of options. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. That's exactly what you do in a lot of regular work, too. You come up with a list of solutions. Here's what we can do today. Here's what we could do this week. Here's what we could do this sprint. Here's what we could do this month. And so on. Yeah. And then we got our Git thing all figured out, and um, they made it so I can't push to master branch. <laughs> I have to get, I have to make the, I have somebody has to do the pull request. They have to approve everything I do. That, that's a good thing. Mm, that means I can't just, yeah. Yeah, no, that's You a, don't do what it means? It means that there's going to be one commit at the end, and it's going to be everything. Well, not really. Mm, like, I'm guessing nobody's going to open this until Tuesday night. Well. Like when the next class is. So if that if that happens, what I would suggest is uh, do it before then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we got an outline, and I created all the files. I just went, you know, touchy touch, and yeah. blah blah blah, and made them all. So, um, because that's the part I didn't want to get screwed up. Because we right. knew that we we're gonna have four pages. We knew we we're gonna have that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just um, like how how does somebody start? making the nav bar and other things if you don't know what to link to and we right. don't know what pages and somebody's just going to go screw it up. Yeah. And so this way there's sort of an outline already and you can kind of just help. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the bootstrapping process is always very important. Oh, I mean, we don't even know if we're going to do that. Uh, so we might use materialize or something. I didn't mean that kind of bootstrapping. Uh, not, not that bootstrap. Bootstrapping oh, just, means, bootstrap? just means the initialization of a project. Yeah. Oh, and um, I was very very high tech with my proposal. See, I, you don't have this beautiful touchscreen thing. I opened up Paint and just started doodling. So, 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 Matt showed me earlier a beautiful mock-up of the four-page application with MS Paint and one color, it just all just, just, just black black lines, black lines, and it conceptualized what was in my mind to my three other group, my two other group members. Yeah, one of them was afk the entire time he had slack open he would occasionally respond he never gave any feedback or anything so we don't know you what's don't know. going to happen and and so that's why the professors talked to you last week about don't worry about bad members well 
the thing is, we need to start building. And if you're not there for decision making, you don't get to make a decision. Like, I'm hoping he yeah. doesn't come back Tuesday night saying, oh, I want to do uh, monster trucks. Monster trucks. Yep. Like, I, monster truck API is really popular these days. It is very hugely popular. Yeah. Tens um, of hits per year. I mean, tens of hits? That's that's more hits than uh, the Nexus gets. Yeah. Oof. Brutal. I am brutal. Um, but, um, no, I, that, that, that's what I'm a little worried about. Um, so we kind of, on the way out, we assigned what each person was going to do before then. Um, and so what are you, you responsible for? I am to figure out how to actually make a call and get the score for the wild. So we, okay. I have a API that just does everything. Like it's, it's the gold standard for sports, um, scores and other things. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, before I go to class on Tuesday, I have to figure out how to actually make calls and, you know, get current schedule and get current, like past history of games and stuff. Right. So the API found to do all this gives you 100 curries a month. That should be a few. Well, how many email accounts do I have? Infinite. So I should be able to work around that. Um, they might notice. Eh, I don't know. No, you don't think so? Ah, you know, they might. Yeah. Um, but because think about it, uh, four people testing their own website independently and everything else because i mean you we're gonna you... copy the keys into the thing well i was gonna say maybe you just use separate keys for each person yeah i don't know how clever everyone is yeah should get that worked out yeah um but no so i ha- i have to make sure it's even because right now it's like we, we have an idea and you gotta double make sure it's feasible right um, yeah some of those you know some of those apis can get kind of it didn't link to any docs on the rap so we we were using this website called rapid api and it just lists a bunch of apis that are out there a lot of them are paid some of them are free right. and a lot of them are a mixture of you know there's a deluxe version right. or there's that yeah and a lot of apis these days especially with like sports things and a oh, ton of money you you have to pay through the through the roof is that what they say yes um and there's a lot of reasons for that but one of the reasons for that is they have to do a lot of work to curate that data themselves, and so they need a way to recoup that. And it is a great source of revenue because it's basically free money. Yeah. There was a um, API that we found that was going to give you the odds for sports betting. Like, so if you wanted to bet on the wild, and like, what are the odds? Sure. Only paid option, and it was sixty a month. And um, well, I'm sure if you were like you know a gambling site and right. you're just stealing people's money, it's great. Um, well, right, you know, sixty dollars for uh, an, an integral service, not a big deal. Um, but for for just a little you know group project, no, no we're, not so we're much. We're not going to spend a dime on this. Yeah, shouldn't. I mean, yeah, but no, I'm pretty happy about all that. Uh, I don't, I uh, not too happy about the topic, but I'm really happy with my group members mostly. Um, Good. That were present. Um, if they showed up, they were great. Yeah. Or if they called in with Hangouts, that was great. Um, but uh, no, I don't know. And I already gave them a heads up that uh, Thursday I wasn't going to be there until yeah. late. Um, well, that's very responsible of you. Yeah, give give us because everyone has a, their own life and stuff. Yeah. And um, you can't be expected to do stuff all the time and stuff. That's why we said like I'm not going to have this done by this. I'm going to have it done by the next time we meet. Right. And th- that's what I told him. Like, we'll always decide what to have done before the next time. Right. And I'm excited. Good. Um. And yeah. Hold on. We'll see what happens in the end. Um. Yeah. So you have a couple of weeks. Well, well, we'll check in next week and see how it's going. Yeah. Oh, in addition, I do have homework too. That's uh, outside of this. Oh, and what's your new homework? Um, it's using it's. Uh, you remember that train scheduler thing I showed you? Like, um. It was using Moment JS to find the current time. Yeah, it was and... like every three minutes the train was arriving. Yeah, so you'd you'd give it a time, and then it would find like the time from the the time that's current, and it'll tell alert you of that. Um, it's basically an extension of that assignment. Cool. Um, and so I was kind of hoping that you know stop doing homework, do the group project, but now you have to split your time. Oh, that's pretty realistic. It, it is, but I don't like realistic. I like easy. Yeah, easier is better. No easy for you. No easy for me. No. You know, speaking of uh, realistic, uh, let's talk about some follow-up from HackerX. Yeah, as you know, HackerX was last week. So HackerX is the premier speed dating style interviewing event that is sweeping the world by storm. I am not a paid sponsor whatsoever. Um, but you just go to all of them. I just go to all of them here in the uh, metro area. They're great. Um, big fan. 
Um, and so you actually did get a call from one of the, um, I don't I know, what, sure do, did. what do you call that? Uh, I got a follow-up. Recruiters? Recruiter? Yeah, one of the recruiters. Um, yeah. I was hoping for a few more, but I did get uh, an, At least an email one. follow-up, which gave me a WebEx call for the, you know, a couple days after that. Yep. And, um, you know, just to learn more about the company. and Well, figure out if it's even worth looking into. And right. Stuff. And I thought that was a very, very nice way because, um, you know, starting a new job, like, you don't want to start at some crappy place. You right. Wanna... And you need, you need, you know, you only get five minutes at HackerX to talk to somebody. It's not enough. You might get some paperwork or you might leave your resume with them. And so it, you, you basically do need a follow up. Yes. Yeah. Um, but no, I got the follow up, got the email, um, did the WebEx thing. And I also got a uh, physical interview on Friday. Okay, that's uh, cool. So I got some writing prompts that somebody um, at the recruiter sent me, and so had two questions on there. Um, got them both done. Took me a few tries. Yep. Um, and so those were those were programming prompts, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So so those those prompts, like like what kind of prompts were those? Like were they really like puzzles, or were they like almost realistic? Like were they what were they? Oh, they're just puzzles. They weren't realistic at all. Okay. Um, I mean. If you break down a real world thing, like you know how everything. Is. Yeah. But no, these were just little like here. Here's a here's an array. Find the average. Okay. Um. And here's an object. Find the two highest value of after you compute the values inside the object. Okay. So they they were they were puzzles, but they weren't like right merge sort. No, no, they weren't anything like that. Yeah, that's good. Merge sort puzzles are the worst. Because puzzle sorts are the best. Exactly. Or quick sort. Um, so the coding questions, those were fun. Um, and then, and then you were asking me earlier, like, what about like soft questions, like during a typical interview? Cause you, you had some, you had some concerns or some, you know, questions about how that goes. Well, it's just, um, when you look online and stuff, like what do people ask in interview questions and stuff? Some of them are just curveball questions. You think um, they're curveball. I think they're regular. I don't know. I just, um, when somebody asks you, Ryan. What 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 do you think you suck at? Tell, so, tell me what you suck at. So I, I I'll, I'll be forthright here. I'm an extremely technical person. It is not always easy for me to get to a place to describe a, a process without using the specific technical terminology that actually describes it. So is that that's one one of my challenges, and I I'm working through that, of course, over time. But it's still a challenge. Yeah, and it's just um, I made that up. So uh, instantaneous BSing is a skill. Turns out that's a good one to have, I guess. Um, but no, I'm just hoping I don't get something that I can't answer right on the spot and make it sound legit. It's a professional set of standards and rules yeah. and etiquette and clothes wearing and stuff. Um, yes, I know it's hard for you to believe. But I know, and it's just um, it's a bit of it's going to be culture shock. I but think. but it's a real thing. So one of the uh, questions you had for me were was like, can I just get up? Yeah, so at the post office and stuff, as one of my first things I do every morning is I pick up a scanner and scan my barcode on my ID, and then for the rest of the day, that GPS is every minute it's pinging back, and they know exactly how long and where I've spent there. And they don't always look at it, but they can go back years, right? Because right? we've had these scanners for almost two years now, mm -hmm. and it's um, you have to be able to explain every second of your day, pretty much. Yep. And so, in my experience, yes, you can just get up. Like, I get two 10 minute breaks a day. Like you, you, you don't get breaks in the engineering industry. You, you get to do 40 hours worth of work. How you figure out that 40 hours is kind of up to you. So you could take an hour lunch and nobody cares. Nobody cares. That means you have to stay later to, you know, work the rest of your day or come in earlier the next day or do whatever, you know, accounts for that 40 hours a week. But it's up to you how you make that work. Yeah. And during the WebEx call, um, that was not very clear at all how a, an actual workday will be. Yeah. And I think it's it. So in my industry as a consultant, it varies client to client. So, you know, you can kind of think of it as maybe this client, we're, maybe we're working remote for this client. So we're in our dev center. Well, our days are going to look a little bit different because we don't have to, you know, have we don't have to figure out where stuff is in the building. We don't have to go into the cafeteria. We don't have to do a lot of stuff. Um, but let's say you're at a client site. Like the, their days could look a little different. Like maybe they have, you know, big team meetings frequently, or maybe they have small team meetings frequently, or maybe you uh, have two projects at that client. And so some days you have a meeting here and a meeting there. So there's different activities throughout the day. Yeah. 
you know. So how many engagements have you had where you were at cl- the client site? Like I know you so, been to. So, so I've been at one, I've only ever been at one external client ever. Okay. Which is where I am today. It's a long engagement. It is a long engagement. So I've been out there for about two years. And it's fine because I haven't been doing the same work for that long. I've actually had a great opportunity to work on a huge variety of things. For me, this is actually why I like consulting. I get to work on not only just multiple sets of technologies, but also multiple sets of domains. There's there's just no way to know about any of these secret domain stuff. So it's it's really interesting when you get some of those opportunities. Now, on the other hand, there are other clients where, you know, maybe you're in a healthcare client. Ah. And so a healthcare client is going to be much less interesting and much more paranoid because the government told them to be that way. Yep. Yep. So there's there's pros and cons of every client. Now, at some of these client sites, like, are you not allowed to check your personal email? Are you not allowed to have your phone? So I think I think pretty much every client, I mean, except maybe for like a federal client, like if you're working for literally the government. Mm-hmm. of the united states i think if you were in their building you might not be able to have your phone but in every regular client you can have your phone you might not be able to check your email on their computers but you certainly could have your phone okay and you can use whatever lte connection you have yeah you know just some there's some network security things yeah so don't connect to the wi-fi right exactly i'll keep that in mind yep and the the other thing i'll mention is uh and you asked like can, could you just like get up and go for a walk can you? Because sometimes, um, like when I'm doing my homeworks and stuff, when console log is empty and it still doesn't work, I'm just I have to settle down. I, yeah. I get angry. No, I I have the same problem. Um, and so what I'll do is I will uh, even at work, I'll get up and go for a lap around the floor. And they don't keep no. track. Like no. the boss isn't with his clipboard. Like deduct seven minutes from Ryan because he got up for a minute. Nope. And and so e- even if they try to do that, my defense is. You know, while I was going for my walk, uh, I was thinking about the problem the whole time. And they can't prove otherwise, can they? Well, even if they could, I was. Yeah. Um, and, and so, like, the real, the real thing is thinking, like, this is a thinking job. Like, don't make a mistake about that. Like, you're typing a lot, but you have to think about a lot of stuff. And that thinking is what takes time. And so that is, that's what the cost is right so when you actually just sit there and you aren't physically doing anything you're actually doing something you're thinking about what you're trying to do how to achieve it um there has been times where i've been at work i couldn't figure out some problem and as i'm driving home speeding down 394 oh i figured it out Mm -hmm. darn i wish i wasn't driving on 394 i could go type it out right now you know I know there's no texting and driving, but is there coding while driving? There's well? no coding while driving. And why didn't you? Because cause that's a bad idea. Yeah. Well, there you go thinking again. Yeah, it turns out. So, so it turns out coding in the Lowry Tunnel, bad plan. Yes. Yes, yes it is. So uh, that, that's what I'll say about that. You can go for a walk. Uh, you know, in the summer, uh, I will often go wa- for walks around the little courtyard thing. Uh, when it's get nice some fresh out. air. Yep. You get some fresh air. Just stare at the pond, stare at the trees. There's no fish, unfortunately. Uh-oh. There's a water fountain. Well, just uh, stop at a pet store and get a goldfish on I'm, the way. Uh, I'm good. I'm not going to do that. So there's there's plenty of opportunity to take a little break and you know just kind of relax and think about things. There's tons of that. Well, that sounds like a a nice, relaxing, and supportive environment if they let you do that. I mean, it's it's fairly supportive. It. Uh, I don't know. I just can't do that in my industry right now. Yep. Got to get that worked out. Oh, I'm working on it. Yep. But uh, no, so basically the this coming up week at the boot camp, all we're doing is working on the group project. So, um, so no new no new course material ever. Uh, the slide was up like, okay, you guys, we're not going to teach you anything else. The rest is just you no know, get practice coding for the rest of the boot camp. So we haven't done anything with Java. We haven't done anything with the Node.js. We haven't done any of the other things that were listed on a thing. But we had a slide in today's PowerPoint saying, okay, we're done teaching you things. Now it's just you get to learn how to do everything. I hope that's like an ex- like a – there's like a cool down period on that slide. So like we're not going to do anything for two weeks. Yeah. That could be fair. But no, um, yeah. Yeah. 
So do you know if there's another group project after this? There are three. Okay, so and we'll be in different teams on all three projects. So. Okay, so that that's good because just having one is enough. No, yeah, more is not. Okay, well that's good. And uh, no, I'm excited to see what this uh, group. I mean, this is our first time working on something like this together. Yep. Like, um, setting it up that I can't just you know commit things. Right, especially. I have the same problem. Like when you actually have to work in a team, the dynamics are different, and you actually have to be responsible. Yeah, and I mean, so let's say somebody's wanting to work on something, and they don't see that I have the you know pull request thing, and they can't approve it. They can't look at the stuff. I mean, and, you can look at it. Oh, I mean, yeah, but um, they made it so you can't approve your own. Well, that's good. You shouldn't be able to. No. You say that. I do, because it's true. Okay. So, so for most most projects I'm on that have more than two people um, will have a two approver rule. So you need two others to approve. And I think that's brilliant because then the way you're not solely to blame if something goes terrible. Right, exactly. Uh, it was his fault. Precisely. I wrote the bad code, but he said it was okay. I, it happens all the time. Yeah. So no, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me at MatthewPetrol.com and you can also find me at the Nexus under the People's tab. I see. Uh, are you going to update your bio there? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at RyanMar, and of course on my website, RyanRampersite.com. I bought the .dev, but I won't set it up for at least a year, just like my server. <laughs> Very clever. Yep. Have a good one. The Nexus. The Nexus. The Nexus TV. Podcasts from, from the, the Technological, technological Convergence. Convergence.